Children are unique in physical and psychosocial development. This videotape will show you how to administer medications to children, taking these unique factors into account. First, you will learn some general considerations, then specific techniques of administering oral, intramuscular, nasal, otic, and ophthalmic medication to children of different developmental stages will be presented. Let's begin with the general considerations. A major difference between children and adults is that children may resist taking medications. Approach the child with a positive statement. Your approach should say that you expect the child to take the medication. Don't approach the child with the option of not taking the medicine. If you offer a choice, you must honor the response. Are you ready to take your medication now? No. Be honest. Honesty inspires trust. Always tell a child you're giving medication. Do not say that it's candy, even if it tastes like candy. Telling a child that medication is candy is not only dishonest, but dangerous as well. Hello, David. Today I have some medicine for you. What kind of medicine is it? It's medicine for your cold. It's red and cherry flavored. Suppose you tell me what it tastes like. Tastes like cherry. Would you like some water? Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you, David. Consider the child's past experiences with medicine and the form of medication. It may taste badly, be hard to swallow, or it may be unexpected, a suppository, for instance. Gather information from the child's parents, the medical chart, and the child if he's old enough. Then document your findings. Mrs. Myers, I notice that Stephen's chart says that he can't swallow pills. Can you tell me more about that? The only pills he takes willingly are the chewable baby tablets. The others cause him to gag and he spits the pills out. Well, we can take those tablets and crush them and mix them with something he likes. That would be much better, I'm sure. Stephen, remember that pill that you couldn't swallow? Well, I crushed it up and put it in some honey, and now you can take it real easy. And it will taste sweet. I do have my doobill. I do have uh-huh. Okay, that was good, Stephen. Thank you very much. As always, carefully check the medication to be administered. Is it appropriate for the condition or diagnosis of the patient? Most important, is the prescribed dose accurate according to your calculations? Will this be the initial dose? If not, have there been any side effects? Are there any possible drug interactions? To avoid errors, clarify any doubt about the medication before administering it. In pediatrics, it is required that you have another RN check fractional doses and certain drugs such as narcotics, digoxin, insulin, or any other drugs of particular concern. The next segment will present several medication routes and the specifics of medicating children of different developmental stages through each prescribed route. Let's look first at oral medications. Oral medications come in many forms, but the most common for young children is liquid. Always read the label carefully. With pediatric medications, dosages may vary from standardized adult dosages. And for the child on a restricted diet, check the composition of the liquid before dispensing it. 
Liquids must be measured very carefully. The difference of one cc over several dosages in 24 hours can result in an extra dose and a possible overdose. Remember that one dram equals four cc's and one teaspoon equals five cc's. For greatest accuracy, measure the liquid using a calibrated syringe without the needle. Infants will readily take the medicine by sucking on the syringe. For an infant who will not suck the medication when it is offered, you can insert the syringe in the side of the baby's mouth and then slowly squeeze the medication into the mouth along the inside of the cheek. Be sure to allow time for the baby to swallow in small amounts. Infants may also take the medication easily through a nipple. Cooperative toddlers may take the medicine from a plastic medicine cup, which can be squeezed to accommodate a tiny mouth, rather than from a spoon from which the medicine can easily spill. You can then add a little water to the cup to make sure the child gets all the medicine. Some toddlers and preschool children prefer taking the medicine directly from the syringe. Oral medications also come in pill form. If the child cannot swallow tablets or capsules, the pills may be crushed or mixed with a very small amount of water if the child is on a restricted diet, or syrup or jelly if there are no restrictions. Try to avoid mixing medicine with food because a child may learn to dislike the food if the medicine tastes badly and may refuse the food if it is offered later. Verify with the older child whether he is able to swallow pills or capsules. Needles frighten most children. To avoid frightening the child, prepare the medication at the nurse's station or at the medication cart. Be sure to maintain sterile technique as you would in preparing adult medications. Knowledge of growth and development will greatly assist you in understanding how to approach a child who needs an injection. Before you administer the medication, examine the child to determine the site of injection, paying attention to anatomical landmarks. The size, weight, age, and condition of the child will determine the injection site, the amount of medication the particular muscle will tolerate, and the size needle to use. Use the smallest gauge needle for the viscosity of the medication and the shortest length needle that will reach the muscle. The vastus lateralis is a good muscle for all ages. Even infants generally have well-developed anterior lateral thigh muscles. Vigorous kicking, characteristic of infants, develops muscles and promotes the absorption of medication. But be sure to examine the site and take the culture of the baby into consideration. For example, Infants from far eastern countries are often strapped to their mother's backs for the first two years of life. This causes a poorly developed vastus lateralis. The dorsogluteal muscles develop with walking. Therefore, the patient should have been walking for a year before considering these sites. To give an injection to an infant of six months or younger, Stabilize the baby's knee and hip joint on the side of the selected site. This will help to keep the infant from moving. As with adults, clean the site with alcohol and stretch the skin taut. Administer the injection at a 90 degree angle with a quick flick of the wrist. After checking the location of the point, by pulling back slowly on the plunger of the syringe, Inject the medication slowly to prevent tissue damage and promote absorption. 
The needle will remain in the muscle if you rest your palm firmly on the leg while holding the syringe. This way, if the leg moves, your hand moves with it, preventing the needle from accidentally being withdrawn. Remove the needle quickly and apply light pressure to the area. The infant will probably cry. Comfort the child after the injection by holding and rocking. Parents, when available, can usually do this best. If the parent is upset or unable to help you, let the parent choose whether or not to participate. If the parent chooses to wait outside until the treatment is over, comfort the baby until the parent returns. The preschool and school-aged child will appreciate a Band-Aid over the injection site because without the Band-Aid, this aged child often believes his insides will spill out through the hole. Older children who can readily accept injections may be allowed to choose the injection site themselves. Heidi, do you want your medicine in your leg or in your buttocks? All right, you must lie on your stomach now. Sheila is here to help you hold still. Helping a child to hold still is much more reassuring than holding them down. When the dorsogluteal muscle is to be used, have the child lie prone with his toes pointed inward. This makes it difficult to tense the muscle and the injection will be less painful. Heidi, you can yell or cry if you want to, but don't move. A parent or helper may be involved to distract the child. Avoid showing the child the needle. Heidi, I hold your hand and we can count while you get the medicine. Let's see if the nurse can finish going or giving you the medicine by the time we count to 100. Let's count fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Am I done? Following the injection, praise the child. Some praise is essential. That was great. You held still and that was important. Let the child verbalize her feelings. Take a moment to listen to her while she relieves her fear and anxiety. This creates trust. Are you all right now? The medicine hurt when you did it, but it's okay now. It hurt. It's okay. All right. If, if a child gives any indication that he is getting an injection because he's bad, spend the time with him to ensure that he understands the real purpose of injections. Some children will benefit psychologically from needle play. The nurse or play therapist can supervise the child giving injections to a doll or stuffed animal. This allows the child to work through his fears and anxiety. Instilling medicine in the eye, ears, or nose of children does not differ significantly from the methods used for adults. The big difference is how children react. Even if you tell children not to move, the sensations of certain medications will make them want to move. Before administering nose drops to an infant, warm the drops to room temperature with warm tap water or by holding them in your hand. Hold the infant snugly by cradling her in one arm while you administer the drops with the other hand. Rest the hand with the dropper on the child's head so that if the child moves, your hand and the dropper will move accordingly, preventing trauma and contamination. Keeping the dropper away from the nostril also prevents contamination. 
hold the dropper close to the nostril and instill the correct number of drops. Hold the infant in position for one minute to maximize the effects of the nose drops. For the older child, place a pillow under the shoulders and allow the head to extend backward over the pillow. Try to gain as much cooperation as possible. Most children do not like anything put into their nose. Just when you think the child is in a good position, he will literally jump up or raise his head and cover his nose with his hands. Don't threaten the child by saying, don't you dare move. And try not to create unnecessary anxiety by telling a child that you're going to hold him or her down. Rather, help the child to cooperate and lessen fear and distrust. David, I'm going to put one drop of nose drops into your nose. I'm not going to touch your eye or anything else, just one drop in your nose. Your mom can hold your hand so you can hold very still, okay? All right, and you need to hold your head back for just a little while. If you count to 20, then it'll be time enough for the medicine to run all the way back to where it's supposed to go. Okay, can you count slowly? I bet you're up to eight now. Okay, that's good. When instilling ophthalmic medications, Sterile technique is one of the most important principles to observe to prevent the introduction of new pathogens. Generally, only one eye will be receiving medication, and it is imperative to prevent contamination of the unaffected eye. Prior to instilling the medication, the eye should be cleansed. Use a moistened cotton ball to wash from the inner canthus to the outer canthus in one stroke then throw the cotton ball away. If the eye still needs cleansing, repeat the procedure using a new cotton ball for each stroke. The child's eye should not be washed or wiped with a washcloth. Also, warm the medication to room temperature. The natural response of the child who sees a dropper coming toward his eye is to shut the eye and more than likely shut it very tightly. It's difficult even with infants to open the eye and nearly impossible if the child is crying. Tearing can also render the medication ineffective. Therefore, the child's cooperation is imperative. Infants may have to be restrained to instill medications effectively. For an older child, talking throughout the procedure helps him to remember instructions and not to panic. Stephen, I want you to hold very still while I touch the bottom of your cheek. I want you to look up towards the top of your head. Bring your eyes up. I'm going to put one drop of medicine in your eye. Okay? Now close your eyes and roll your eyes all around while they're still closed. That's wonderful. You did a nice job. Before you administer an ointment, expel a small amount on a sterile gauze pad to ensure any pathogens which may have contaminated the tip are wiped off. The ointment will be somewhat more difficult to instill because a little more time is needed to apply a small line of medication to the conjunctival sac, and the child must hold very still. Twist the ophthalmic tube to end the ribbon of medication and have the child keep his eye closed for a few minutes to get the best effects from the medication. Installation of otic drops is usually considered a clean procedure because the external ear is not sterile. However, if the eardrum is punctured and drainage is present, then sterile technique is required. Warm the medication as with the ophthalmic drops. Cold medication on the eardrum can cause pain. For children under three years of age, 
pull the pinna or auricle of the ear back and down to straighten the ear canal. For children over the age of three, pull the pinna up and back. Aim the medication toward the canal rather than the eardrum. Again, remember to stabilize your hand on the child's head in case she moves. Heidi, I want you to hold very still while I put some drops in your ears. It'll feel a little bit like when you go swimming. You know how it feels when you get water in your ear? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you to hold still over there just a minute so the medicine can go in the canal. This allows the medication to enter the ear canal. Explain the sensations and stay with the child. Administering medications to children is challenging and requires knowledge, understanding, patience, and empathy.